Apartments tend to be cheaper than houses, but they're also subject to different policies with the banks than standalone houses are. So I'm going to talk to you today about what you need to know around apartment lending policy so that you can look at those and be comfortable buying them. Thanks for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit subscribe below. All of the ad revenue that we'll generate from these ads goes to local New Zealand charities. So if you're looking to buy your first home or maybe looking to downsize a little bit, apartments can often be one of the first things you check out. In the comment section below, let us know whether you like apartments or standalone houses and whether that's for your first home, your current house or your investment property. We're always keen to hear feedback from our listeners. The first thing to know about apartments is that you can't borrow as much on them as you can with standalone houses. First home buyers and current homeowners can often borrow up to 90% on standalone houses, whereas with apartments they can often be a maximum of 80%. One bank will look at 85%, but apart from that you really have to max out at about 80%. Now the one exemption to this is the people that qualify for the first home loan. This is those who are buying under about 650,000 in Auckland, 550,000 in the main centres and 450,000 elsewhere and have an income of less than 130,000, you can get apartments at 90% using this government back scheme. But apart from that, 80% is about where you're looking. Secondly is the size of apartments. Banks don't tend to like apartments that are less than about 40 to 50 square meters. Now a couple of banks will lend 40 square meters, one bank likes 45 square meters, another bank likes 50 square meters, and sometimes they take balconies into those measurements and sometimes they don't. So you can see there's quite a bit of range between the banks for apartments. If you're looking at 50 square meters or more, you're probably safe with most banks. Now the reason for this is that small apartments tend to be hard to sell and that's what a bank wants to know it can do if you don't pay your mortgage. So those 30 square meter apartments that are typically built for overseas student accommodation are really hard to sell. There's only a small percentage of the market that want to live in a 30 square meter apartment. So they're hard to sell maximum you can probably get on those is about 50%. Now that's worth thinking about because if you've got $200,000 you could in essence borrow up to a million dollars for a mortgage on an apartment but for a small apartment the maximum you could borrow is about 400,000 that's 50%. And that makes quite a difference especially around investment because Investment is all about leveraging to get the maximum capital gains and capital yield for your money. With that 200,000 you could get a much larger standard sized apartment than those small 30 square meter apartments only get about 400,000. So really worth thinking about I know those small apartments yield a lot of cash but not a great use of your money so have a think about that before you look at those really small apartments. There are some additional expenses with apartments, the obvious one being a body corporate rate that you must pay. Now this pays for the external maintenance of the building, if you've got a gym, if you've got a pool, it, it pays for all the maintenance on all those things. The rate can vary depending on the apartment. If you don't have a pool or a gym, you won't need some money for that. Some apartments are building up a long-term maintenance fund, others try and get the money when they need the maintenance. So there's quite a big variance and you really have to look into what you're paying for on those body corporate rates. But it is worth bearing in mind that if you owned your own home, you should be putting some money aside for maintenance, painting the outside, doing the roof. It's just that a lot of homeowners don't do that. So the body corporate isn't necessarily a huge additional fund over buying a home because you're going to have to pay for maintaining the outside of your home eventually. So don't think of it as a terrible expense, but really do check what you're putting your money in for. The other thing to look at is how dysfunctional the body corp is. Some body corporate groups are fighting each other. There's one guy who's not paying the rates. There's another one who doesn't want to save up for a long-term maintenance fund. And these are really important things to know before you buy the apartment. A poorly forming body corporate 
will often devalue your apartment. In other words, if you're trying to sell your apartment and someone comes along and sees that that body corporate is dysfunctional, they will offer you less because there is going to be a hassle in the future. So a well-managed, well-functioning body corporate is worth its weight in gold. The next thing to check on apartments is the NBS rating. This is the rating of the new building standards and it measures how well that building will do in an earthquake. Typically the banks like 67% or higher. Now a high rating doesn't mean it's not going to be damaged in an earthquake. It just means that it's going to survive and allow the occupants to leave that building in a large earthquake. So don't think that buildings will be undamaged with a high rating. It's really just how likely they are to remain standing and safe. 67% is the number you want to look for. Any less than that and the bank is going to want to know what kind of structural work is going to go on in the future to bring this building up to spec. Now buyers of any kind tend to look through the listings online whether it's trade me or real estate and search by the lowest priced properties first to see what they can afford. Often you'll find with apartments that the lowest priced apartments seem to have these amazing views, amazing size, but be really cheap. This would tend to indicate that that apartment is a leasehold apartment and you would own the unit but not the land that the building sits on. With leaseholds, there is an additional payment to the ground owner, and these are reviewed quite regularly. Sometimes they're seven years, sometimes 21 years. There are 999 year leases, but these are fairly rare. You want to know how often these leases are renewed because the bank will want you to pay down your mortgage before the next renewal. In other words, if it's three years away, you'll have to pay your whole mortgage off in three years. If it's seven years away, same for that. Seven years, you've got to pay your mortgage. If it's 999 years, you've got 30 years to pay your mortgage as per usual, and that won't be too much of an issue. But really think about leasehold apartments because they can devalue as they get closer to the lease renewal. Because the new owner doesn't know what they're gonna be paying. They could triple the leasehold costs, so they're gonna pay less in case that price really goes up. Obviously, we're in a new world with Uber and Lyft where you may not even need a car, so getting a car park isn't a requirement by the bank. The bank will happily lend money to you for an apartment that doesn't have a car park. Having said that, Owning an apartment with a car park gives you some flexibility with who you can sell to, people who want a car park, people who don't want a car park, and if you don't need it, you can always rent it out to one of your neighbors or a local worker nearby, and they can pay you as an extra source of income. So apartments with car parks tend to be easier to sell, and that's always a good thing when you own property. Finally, I just wanna talk about capital growth with apartments. Apartments don't tend to grow as much in value as houses and the reason I think this is is because houses can be made unique. You can make the front of a house as beautiful as you like, you can landscape the backyard and paint the outside to make it look fresh. That's really hard to do with an apartment. You've only got the internal walls and area to make unique. Everything outside is the responsibility of the body corp. This particularly comes up when a new building gets built next to yours and suddenly your apartment building doesn't look as flash as it once did. The shinier, newer building looks brand new, nice and shiny, and your building looks a bit old. You can fix this with a house, harder to fix with an apartment. But the good side of apartments is that you often get a better yield from them. People want to live close to where they work, people want to live in the city, it's nice and useful, nice and efficient. So you tend to get a better cash flow from apartments, but a better capital growth from homes. There's no right answer, it just depends on what you're looking for. Okay, so finally to wrap up, the main thing to think about with apartments is the LVR. The maximum you can typically borrow is 80 to 85% and the square meterage. If you're looking over 50 square meters, that's the key amount that you want. Anything over that is fine, anything under that, and you'll be limited to which banks you can go to or limited to how much you can borrow. If you want to know more about this, just search Mortgage Lab and Apartments, and you'll find our in-depth article on everything you need to know about apartments. Thanks for watching, cheers.